A legend has it that before he died, he prepared 40 remedies that could raise a man from the dead. When the doctor passed away, his apprentice applied the medicines prepared by him, aiming at resurrecting him. The old body became more and more young and fresh under the action of the medicines. It seemed he was about to wake up and speak, but the excited apprentice couldn't hold the vessel with the last, the 40th, magic solution, and the teacher's body was again in the grip of decay and putrefaction. He spent most of his life roving along the caravan paths. He was suffering privations and rising to the top of power. He was a vizier once, and he was put into prison the other time. But he didn't stop his scientific work even for a day. His contemporaries in Central Asia called him Abu Ali al Hussein, Ibn Abd Allah Ibn Ali Ibn Sina, and his thankful descendants in Europe called him Avicenna. Speaking modern language, Avicenna was a wonder kind, son of a functionary. He knew Koran by heart at the age of 10, studied the works of Aristotle, Euclid, and Ptolemy. Later on, Avicenna recalled, coming back home at night, I used to light a lamp and plunge into reading or writing. In my sleep, I continued to think over the matters I occupied myself with in reality. I led such a life until I mastered the sciences as well as a human can ever do. But one question interested him in particular. What if a man can be made immortal? The 12-year-old Avicenna began to study classical works of physicians of ancient Greece, Rome, Egypt, and India, under the guidance of the doctor Masihi, who was the stalwart of Hippocrates and Galen. By the age of 16, Avicenna became an excellent doctor. He fixed spinal curvatures, removed bladder calculi, and performed operations on eyes. In 999, the ruler of the neighboring country conquered Bukhari. Avicenna, along with his teacher, moved to Khorazm. But in several years, they had to flee again. The old teacher met his death in the sands, while Avicenna remained alive by a miracle. Since then, Avicenna had to live under an assumed name in order to escape persecutions from the part of the treacherous sultan, Mahmud of Ghazni. Sometimes during the long journeys, he wrote his scientific works in a saddle while riding a horse. The scientist didn't interrupt his work even when he was confined for four months. All in all, in the course of his lifetime, Avicenna created more than 400 works on astronomy, mathematics, geology, philosophy, linguistics, and even theory of music. The legend says that it was Avicenna who invented gijak, a string bow instrument widespread on the territory of Central Asia. But his major work is considered to be the canon of medicine, a medical encyclopedia that contained knowledge of health and diseases from the ancient times and enlarged by individual discoveries of Avicenna. The scientist even surpassed Galen in his exactness of anatomical descriptions. Avicenna presumed that diseases are caused by invisible creatures that live in water, air, and soil. He could define 15 types of pain, 26 types of breathing, and 48 types of pulse with 10 parameters each one. Once Avicenna was called up to see the son of the ruler of Jurjan, the youth was sleepless and refused to eat. None of the doctors could find a reason for this illness. Avicenna guessed it was not his body that was ill, but the youth's soul, and that he suffered from an unhappy love. The doctor requested to enunciate the names of all the streets in the city while he was feeling the patient's pulse. When the street where his beloved one lived was pronounced, the pulse became notably more rapid. When the owner of the cherished house was mentioned, the patient became much more anxious, and having heard the name of his daughter, the youth passed out. Avicenna advised the ruler to fix the marriage of his son as fast as possible. The principle of influence of emotional state on the physical parameters of the organism, discovered by Avicenna, 
is now used in polygraph, a lie detector. Up from Earth's center through the seventh gate, I rose and on the throne of Saturn sate, and many knots unraveled by the road, but not the master knot of human fate. Continuous journeys and persecutions undermine Avicenna's health. He died on the journey. His property was plundered, his library was lost. In 100 years, religious fanatics set fire to his books on philosophy in the central square of Baghdad. But the canon of medicine became the universal medical encyclopedia all over the world. And when the printing press was invented, the major work of Avicenna became the second book after the Bible, edited in a new way. People in Central Asia are still composing legends and singing songs about Avicenna. If one mentions his name to the doctors today, they would reply that Ibn Sina was the great doctor. Mathematicians would call him the well-known astronomer and mathematician. He is the theorist of geology, the geologists would say, and the theorist of music, the musicians would add. And all to a man would be right.